Copper is a very important trace mineral in the body. Unfortunately, issues with copper metabolism are very common today and can lead to wide-ranging problems that often go unnoticed until it's too late. In fact, I would go so far as to say copper is the most misunderstood mineral out there. So in this video, I want to talk about what exactly copper is, its roles in the body, and how to get enough of it, which means we will talk about copper supplementation at the end of the video. Let's start by discussing what copper is and why we need it. Copper is an essential dietary mineral, meaning we need to get it from food and cannot produce it ourselves. Unlike the macro minerals, for example, magnesium or calcium, which the body needs a lot of every day, copper is a trace mineral, meaning the body needs only a fairly small amount of it. The RDA for adult men and women is about 900 microgram per day. Unfortunately, most people regularly consume much more than this, leading to copper overload, which I will talk about later in the video. First, let's discuss the roles of copper in the body. The most important ones are 1. Energy metabolism. Copper is crucial for our body's energy production, because without it, iron cannot be loaded onto carrier proteins for transport through the body. And as you probably know, without iron, your body's energy system basically breaks down. Even though most specialists check for iron deficiency, what many of them don't know is that iron needs copper at every stage of its metabolism. Otherwise, the iron gets stuck and causes oxidative stress. So oftentimes, symptoms related to iron are really caused by a dysfunction of copper in the body. Next, connective tissue. Copper is also required for linking collagen and elastin, which are proteins that provide resilience and elasticity to tissue. That means through these proteins, copper indirectly helps maintain the integrity of your body, organs, and blood vessels, and it also plays a big role in bone formation, because copper is needed to fix calcium to the bones. Copper is also extremely important for a properly functioning immune system. It does this in a different way than the traditional nutrients that are normally associated with immune function, such as vitamin C and zinc, which have primarily antioxidative properties. Copper is not an antioxidant, but instead a very toxic substance when it's found in large amounts that are not bound to carrier proteins. A functioning immune system will use this to its advantage and transport copper to wherever it detects bacteria to defend itself against it. White blood cells, along with proteins such as ceruloplasmin, then surround the bacteria and use their copper ions in order to break down the threatening intruder. Studies have confirmed this and shown that elevated concentrations of copper can be found near the sites of infection. By the way, these same antibacterial properties are the reason we use copper pipes today or why some ancient cultures drank out of copper bottles. As you can see, properly functioning copper is critical to health. And in summary, its most important functions are to support your body's energy system, to grow healthy connective tissue, and to neutralize bacteria and infections. The foods highest in copper are shellfish, seeds and nuts, organ meats, whole grain products, and chocolate. Natural vitamin C, for example, from the acerola berries, are also a great copper source, because the body can use it to build ceruloplasmin, the copper transport protein. Okay, at this point you're probably thinking to yourself, copper is awesome, I will make sure to get more of it. Well, there is a problem. Remember how in the beginning of the video I said that copper is probably the most misunderstood mineral out there? The reason for this is that most people actually don't need more copper. They either need less of it or more bioavailable copper, so copper bound to ceruloplasmin. Let me explain. Like I said before, copper is a very potent oxidant. Oxidants react with other molecules in your body, such as molecules from tissue, organs, or even your DNA. When they do this, they damage whatever they react with and cause disease and inflammation. While our body can use the oxidative properties of copper to its advantage, this only works when it's bound to a carrier protein, such as ceruloplasmin. Unfortunately, many people have a lot of unbound copper in their body, and it just sits there, cannot be used, and creates oxidative stress. 
This problem of too much free biounavailable copper is also called copper overload or copper toxicity. The more of this unusable copper accumulates in the body, the more the copper benefits that I talked about earlier, such as strong immune system, more energy, and healthy connective tissue, are turned on their head and stop working. Then you feel tired, are prone to infections, and get skin problems. Other symptoms that are common include migraines, anxiety, and hormonal issues. Sadly, your standard blood test will not pick up this problem, because the excess copper is found in the tissue, not in the blood. Just as a side note, my first blood test actually showed a copper deficiency, after which my practitioner told me to supplement copper. This would have made my symptoms a lot worse, and fortunately, I did a hair analysis soon after, which clearly showed my copper overload in the tissue. Because biounavailable copper is so difficult to spot, and you really need to know what you're looking for, it is a controversial topic. While many people know of Wilson's disease, which is a genetic malfunction that also leads to too much copper in the body, regular copper overload isn't caused by your genes, but instead by chronic overexposure coupled with too much stress. Most practitioners working only with blood tests probably never heard of it, and even many health websites claim the chances of getting too much copper through your diet are minimal. All I can tell you is that after working with specialists and after researching nutrient deficiencies and imbalances myself, focusing on my copper issue was probably the most important step in my personal health journey. Doing this can be very complex and I'm glad I sought out the help from experts. Okay, before I wrap up this video, let's get to the last part of it, which is copper supplementation. When and how much should you supplement, if ever? This is a very complicated topic because copper is so complex. The labs that I recommend for hair analysis say about 80% of the hair samples that they receive show some sign of copper dysregulation, meaning they probably either have too much total copper in the body, too much biounavailable copper that their body cannot use, or both. These people should generally be very careful with copper supplementation and many should avoid it altogether. Instead, they should work with a specialist to make their existing copper more bioavailable and or detox the excess copper in their system. For people with a normal copper deficiency that was confirmed not just by a blood test but also hair analysis, a small dose of 1 to 2 mg of copper should be enough. But again, because this is such a complex topic, please talk to a professional first. Common forms of supplements are copper glycinate, copper citrate, copper gluconate, or copper sulfate. While there's little research that compares the absorption between the supplement types, anecdotal evidence tends to show that copper glycinate and copper citrate are best used by the human body. Also, and I've mentioned this before in the video, natural vitamin C, for example from acerola berries, is also a great copper supplement because the body needs it to build ceruloplasmin, the copper transporting protein. Okay, to end this video and summarize the most important learnings, copper is an important trace mineral that plays a big role in your energy system, immune system, and connective tissue. Unfortunately, many people suffer from copper dysregulation that is often not diagnosed through regular blood tests. This is also known as copper overload, biounavailable copper, or copper toxicity, and can cause all kinds of metabolic problems. Because of the complexity of copper, be careful of blindly supplementing it and make sure to consult an expert if you need help.